want to live a life of significance? Guess what? You can. The choice is yours. Welcome to Duke University's Life of Significance series, where we'll help you do just that. I am Sun Yin Shang, your host for the series, and I help leaders and teams discover and apply their superpowers so that they can make the biggest possible difference and live their fullest lives. I also lead the Coach K Center on Leadership and Ethics at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business, and I'm ranked by Thinkers50 as the world's number one executive coach. And for this episode, my co-host is Pau Gasol, a distinguished fellow with our center. Pau is a six-time NBA All-Star, a two-time national basketball champion, and an Olympian. Pau lives that life of significance because whether it's about helping to eliminate childhood obesity through the Gasol Foundation, or helping children thrive through his role as an UNICEF ambassador, he's always using his platform to make a positive difference. Our guest today is 15-year-old Ezra Freck. Ezra was born without most of his left leg and with missing fingers on his left hand. He received the prosthetic leg when he was less than a year old, but that did not stop him from becoming an incredible athlete. He has competed in many sporting events, including basketball, baseball, soccer, and karate, with a focus on track and field. He is a two-time silver medalist in the Parapin American Games, and he is also a disability advocate and a prominent public speaker. All right, well, thanks again, Sun Yin, for having me. It's always an honor to, uh, to co-host uh, the series of talks of Life's Significance. And I, and I, I couldn't think of a better uh, person to, uh, to really talk about this subject, uh, a person and a kid that I met when he was four years old. Uh, now he's 15 um, and I've just shared so many cool experiences with him and he's provided so much inspiration in my life as well. So, uh, so Ezra, thank you for being here with us. And what does it mean to live a life of significance? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to speak with you guys. Uh, living a life of significance for me means, uh, you know, devoting yourself to the, the betterment of, of humanity. And I think, you know, pal, you resemble that and in, in all in giving back and everything you're doing with your Gasol foundation. And, uh, but I think living a life of significance is, is giving back to people. And, um, and, and I think there's so many different ways that you can do that. And there's so many different people who have, you know, done certain things, but I think it, it, at the core, uh, living a life of significance is, is, is committing yourself to the betterment of humanity, whether that be, you know, providing sports for people with physical disabilities, like what my organization does, or, you know, giving back to people in need or, you know, helping out with homeless shelters. I think living a life of significance um, is uh, living a life where you're, you know, helping other people and giving to people who are in a situation where they need it maybe more than you do. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. And you've, uh, again, you've done that at a very, from a very young age, I think, uh, I think it was at four years old when we met each other. And I actually, they, they, they showed me this video uh, of you talking to your classmates or talking to kids of your age uh, and really inspiring them. Um, you know, it was just incredible. Uh, it was very touching. I was like, I would love to meet this kid. Uh, and I just never, I'll never forget that moment at Staples Center before a game where he just uh, jumped in my arms and I was just carrying you. Um, uh, it was just a very, very touching moment. And, and you've always been a very loving kid. So, uh, so I think helping others is really in, in within you. It's in, in, your, it's in your DNA. Um, so who in your life lives a life of significance and, and why? Tell us who and why. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that moment was absolutely amazing. And, and, and I was so surprised. I still remember the emotions. That was, that was the best. Mm. Um, someone in my life who lives a life of significance. I mean, I think both my parents do, you know, with what they do with my organization. But I think, I think the, the first person that really comes to mind for me is my, my track and field coach. Her name is Lati Avery, and she has her own organization where she goes back in, uh, she goes into communities that, you know, may not be as well off as other ones, and she provides uh, training. She's a personal trainer, so she coaches and provides training for lots of athletes in the inner city, and, um, and she's been such an influential part of my life, and, my, and, and I, I met her two years ago, and then my track and field career took off, and we've you know, been together for the past two years. We train seven days a week. 
Um, and she really, you know, embodies the idea of living a life of significance with what she does. And, and she does it all for free. You know, she gives no charge. She goes into the inner city and is coaching and putting on clinics almost parallel to what, you know, me and my organization, Angel City, and what we do with people with physical disabilities. And so she definitely lives a life of significance. And I think, you know, my parents as well, you know, my dad left a corporate job to help support me, you know, help support the disabled community and start this organization. My mom, she left acting. She left this career that she had dreamed of just so she could support our family, support the organization. So, you know, when, when you, you know, life of significance, the first people that come to mind are my parents, obviously, but then my coach as well for what they're all doing. So, you know, I think there's lots of different ways, you know, people can live a life of significance, but those are the first people that, that came to mind. You know, I think a, a theme that's coming, that's really surfacing throughout these interviews is this idea that we can't do it alone, right? It's, we can't do it alone, that it's others. And we have to remember whether they're our family members, our friends, our coaches, our mentors, they're the ones, it's through community that we're stronger and we have to contribute back to that community. So Ezra, Wonderful. you have this great motto, which is, Actually, let's hear it in your own words where your motto is, and then tell us what that means. Yeah, um, the, my, the motto that you're, you're speaking of is uh, you can dream it, you can hope it, or you can make it happen. And this is something that I've sort of embodied and, and, and spoke about a lot when I've done public speaking and stuff like that. Um, but at, at the core of it, it's, it's basically about, you know, making your dreams happen because we can, we can always dream, we can always hope about these things and they're super distant in a way. But you won't actually achieve them. You won't even get close to achieve them without actual action and taking the steps necessary and, and taking the first step in the right direction. And so, you know, for me, when I was younger growing up, I had this dream of going to the Paralympics, you know, this dream of, of representing my country on, you know, the biggest stage in the world. And when I was younger, it was more of this like distant goal, this distant dream. And then as I got older and I began to realize that, you know, it was actually on the horizon, I could see myself doing that. I had, I had to actually make it happen. You know, you can dream about it. You can hope about it, but nothing actually ends up happening and you're not going to, you know, progress towards that dream unless you just go out there and make it happen. You take the steps in the right direction. And so, you know, this, the, this quote, this, this motto that I sort of came up with when I was younger now applies to many aspects of my life. You know, if there's something that I want, there's, you know, a, a, something I'm talking about this, you know, homework assignment, getting a good grade in a class, whatever it is, it applies to so many different aspects. You just got to make it happen. You know, you just got to suck it up, you know, make it happen. And that's something that I've, you know, I repeat to myself if, if, you know, something's not necessarily going my way or, you know, like with this pandemic and training has been really difficult. I haven't been able to really train at a track very much. We've been all over the place with lockdowns and shutdowns, but no matter what, I still had to make it happen. I still had to train. I still had to, whether it was in my room, whether it was in my backyard or whether it was on in a high tech training facility, I still had to make it happen. And so this sort of motto that, you know, this idea that you can, you can dream about things that are really distant, but nothing's going to actually change unless you take the action yourself and take the necessary steps. And so that's sort of what that means. And that's sort of, uh, that was sort of a motto that I live my life by, I guess. You know, I think you and Pal both embody that model because Pal also has branched off into so many different, um, he's, a, he's a fantastic on the court, but he's also making a difference off the court. So let's dive into that. For those for, those for whom making it happen isn't a habit, there's a world of space between aspiring to something and where we are now. And there can be thoughts that just uh, deter us, such as, oh, you're gonna fail, it's too hard. And so how do you coach us through that? How do you help us through, you know, so that we can, we can make it happen and take that first step? Yeah, for sure. I mean, self-doubt is something that is universal across all people. And it's almost inevitable in, in some cases. And, you know, something that I, I really pride myself on and something that I truly believe is like speaking negatively to yourself and, and thinking negatively about a situation has no benefits whatsoever. You know, whatever happens to us, like the circumstances we may be put in, thinking negatively about it is only going to make it worse, seem the challenge or situation feel more daunting and scary. And, you know, there's many situations in my life and I'm sure in people's life where stuff just doesn't go your way. And that's just how it is, or something seems really far away or something seems really difficult, but it's not benef benefiting you 
to speak negatively about it or talk bad about yourself or get down on yourself because we really have a choice. Like in, in situations that don't go our way or seem difficult, we have the opportunity to either continue down this like road of sadness and sulking in that sort of dark period, or you can flip your mindset and be like thinking negatively gives has no positive outcome. And I might as well try to make the best out of that situation, do what I can. And I think there's a real, there's a real balance you have to find because it's okay to feel, you know, sad or, you know, not as motivated one time or, you know, get down on yourself for a second because we're human and that happens. But the issue is staying in that dark place and not using that dark period as motivation. Another one of my, another quote that I really love is like, is stars can't shine without darkness, right? And that it perfectly captures the idea that like we stars literally can't shine unless it's dark outside. So it just goes to show like, we're not going to be able to shine. You're not going to be able to succeed or, or, you know, do anything in that sense, unless you do go through that dark period, because we're human and that happens. But the issue is when people stay in that dark period and don't let themselves shine, you know what I mean? That's where the issue is. So I don't know if that was exactly what you're looking for, but that's sort of my, my mindset when I think about, you know, being in that dark period, I guess. That was inspiring. I think one of the things that I, that I always loved about Ezra is um, his joy and his true uh, passion for, for life. And, and I think he, you know, and Ezra, I would love for you to talk to us about, you know, how did you approach, because you, you, grew, you were born with, with certain you know, differences, right? Uh, and, and at an early age, I don't know what you can attribute this to, uh, I'm, I'm sure your parents had a, played a big role, right, in, in that as well, in supporting you and loving you and, and nurturing you and and making you feel like it's okay, right? It's okay to be different. You don't have to have a worse life or feel bad about anything just because uh, you were born with cer certain, um, you know, uh, uh, disease or, or or limitation or whatever it might be. I'm just. My, my, what you would really attract me, you were such a magnet, uh, such a magnet for joy. You, you really, the days that I was, that we met a lot, a lot of the times, what it was at the gym, which Ezra loved, he would go everywhere with his basketball. Like at a restaurant, he would bring his basketball. We went to dinner with, with his family and he, he wanted to play basketball. So we went on the sidewalk, we were in the parking lot and we just dribbled and passed to each other at night uh, because he just loved, it was that, that passion that you always had in within yourself and you shared with, with others. And so t tell us about growing up and, you know, and, and being different because we all are different in different ways. I was tall and skinny and I stood out for being tall and skinny and people, you know, and kids made fun of me be for being tall and skinny. Um, so we can all relate and we, we're all unique in a certain way, but what was, what has been your, your message and your mindset uh, approaching uh, your own childhood as you've grown older and how you share that with others. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, growing up with a disability, like there's no real way to sugarcoat it. Like it was just hard. It was difficult. And, um, you know, looking back it obviously, you know, like, oh, you know, I could have said like, oh, I just grew up like a normal, but that's not the reality. It was difficult. And, and there's definitely points in my younger years where I was really in dark periods and I was just confused and mad and angry at, you know, why was I born this way? I would tell my parents, like, why did I have to be the only kid in my school with one leg, the only one of my friends who has a disability, who has two fingers? There was definitely moments like that. And, and, a, and a lot of it has come from my parents, right? Just instilling this sort of confidence in me that my disability shouldn't hold me back from achieving anything that I want to accomplish or anything that I want to do. And I, I think I... Sorry about the text. I think I, I gained a lot of confidence as I got all as I got older, you know, from my parents, a lot from my parents. But the situations that I was put in and stuff that happened, I just had to figure it out. And I had and and, and I had to just, you know, I, the literal the, the, the stars can't shine without darkness quote that I just spoke about. And, you know, being in that negative situation, that's literally stuff that my parents told me and my parents talked to me about. Right. Because I mean, as a little kid, as a little four or five year old kid everywhere I was walking in public, 
there's people staring and there's, you know, people pointing fingers and whispering and, you know, like, oh, you know, I felt like this, this attention, this unwanted attention of people always looking at me and judging me all the time when I was younger. And it wasn't until I got, you know, really good. And when I started public speaking, really good at sharing my story and opening up about these quote unquote insecurities that I was able to become confident within myself. And I was able to, you know, really puff my chest out more. My mom used to tell me if you're ever, you know, scared of people, what people are thinking, just puff your chest out and walk into the room like you own the place. And so with that mentality growing up, everything that I did, you know, I was, I just puffed my chest out, walked in, you walked in like I owned the place and knew that like, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Like, I know who I am. I know my disability is cool and all that. Like, I just totally blocked out all of that, that negative unwanted attention. And as well, sports, sports played a huge role in, in me having any sort of confidence and being able to do anything. And, you know, the, the adult figures that were in my life, I mean, POW played such a, a huge role in me becoming anywhere as near as confident as the person I am today. I mean, he like literally my hero that was on the TV screen is now someone who we had a personal relationship with. And I was, you know, I was, you know, flustered with all this love and kindness and this, it was so amazing, like the whole experience and, and my family. And it was just like, just being able to grow up in, in such an environment of love and support. And then, you know, everything that happened, you know, from meeting you and, and then it was just, it all combined to, to work itself out perfectly and allow me to, you know, have this confidence and, and allow me to able to take a step back sometimes in situations that are difficult and scary and think back to the times where I was a young five, six year old kid and had to get through that same thing again. And I'm like, you know, I got this. I know how to get through this. And so it was a combination of things. Um, but, you know, POW played such a huge role in that as well. You know, there were, there were um, two things um, in, in, in that story. One is the power of friendships, right? Of people believing in us. And that's how they, they, they make our, the stars in us shine more brightly um, in the night. And then the second part of that story is, and I completely lost my train of thought. So I'm going to hand it over to you, pal, why I remember. Yeah, I know. I think um, to me, Ezra, he was, he was a kid that, and I love that your parents, again, such an important role, right? And then the effect that we have on our children, uh, it's, it's, so, it's so important for us to be aware of. Uh, I say, hey, just walk in the room, buff your chest like you own the room. You know, and and that's like, okay, mom. You know what? I'll 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 do that and see how it feels. And it makes you feel confident all of a sudden, right? And that's how I felt. You never felt like when playing together, uh, like you had any type of handicap or disability, or you couldn't do something because you were born without you know a leg and you had a, a prosthetic leg with you. Uh, you played basketball as hard as you could. He tries. He tried to beat me at shooting games at our practice facility. He would get upset because I beat him. It's like uh, he would get upset. He was like, "Ezra, I do this for a living. <laughs> I if you beat I remember me, that. You remember that day? Uh, he got upset. I was like, okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna let you win. Uh, it's just I not competitive. I was competitive. You're super competitive, and and he's like, and I was trying to teach him also because he was playing in a, a basketball team. Uh, to finish with his right, finish with his left, and get comfortable uh, with, with both hands and go in both, both directions, which I thought is such an important factor for me and for my success in my career. So, uh, so we also competed and we made it fun, and, and Ezra would get so competitive. But he never felt, because he had a disability, he, he was less capable of doing something than anyone else, right? And I think that that's so, so important. Uh, such an important, powerful message. And, and then you made everyone else feel that didn't have a disability, that if you could do it, what, 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 what excuse do I have, right? I mean, why can I not go out there and, and give my best and pursue my dreams like, uh, like anyone else? Um, um, so I think you were always very inspiring. Uh, and I love the, the, the joy, the passion that you always brought to to every interaction, and you are just as loving uh, as as I might have been. Uh, so it's, it's been an incredible, I think, relationship with you and your family. And um, and, uh, and you know, it's been what now? I don't know how many years now. Twelve years, thirteen years that we've known each other. Uh, so it's it's been pretty pretty special. And I just want to 
um, I encourage you to continue to, to inspire and bring light and inspiration to, to people out there uh, because you didn't have it easy, uh, but having it hard is not, not an excuse, right? Uh, because we can all make excuses. We can all find reasons to not do certain things, but you, you've shown, hey, I'm gonna pursue my dreams. And you know what? I'm not just gonna pursue, I'm gonna take action and I'm gonna do everything that I need to do in order to accomplish it. And, uh, you know, and I hope that one day I see you compete in the Paralympic Games, hopefully in Tokyo, hopefully, you know, hopefully in different ones. And, and do you accomplish that? And uh, if I have a chance, I'll try to I'll try to be there to witness it in person. Um, be <laughs> this is such a beautiful moment. I'm like, I'm, I'm really moved, like watching this lovely friendship um, play out in the memories. And Ezra, something you said before is when you're reaching those hard moments, and all everyone in the world has hard moments. In fact, this past year, we've all been living through hard moments. You said you remember back to when you were four or five or six and said, hey, I've had hard moments. And there's something there about the beauty of touchstone memories, you know? And I'm wondering as I'm listening to you, like how important, so we've heard the importance of don't do negative self-talk um, because there's you have a choice to talk positively or you have a choice to talk negatively, talk positively. And then there's this thing about how important is it to think back to our past and actually capture those memories. And as we're going forward, also capture those memories that will help us remember. Um, so when times are hard, it's like that quote, the past is, the past is just prologue to our future, right? So can you talk us through, through that? I, uh, I think I think it's definitely an interesting concept that, you know, thinking back to times where, you know, maybe you, you had it good or you had it really something was really difficult and you're able to get through it almost puts things in perspective, in a sense. So now, you know, maybe I've, I've had a lot of issues, like I said, finding a facility, a place to train. So then maybe, you know, down the road when the pandemic has ended. And, you know, I'm at, you know, I'm at like a, a distant place or another place in the US and I can't find a place to train. I'll be think back to this time where it was way more difficult and I'll be like, I can just go to the park and it sort of puts things in a little bit of a perspective. I mean, that's granted a very, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, not, I wouldn't say the deepest example that I could think of, but that's an example where, you know, situations that have happened in your past or memories or challenges or, you know, hurdles, obstacles that you've overcame in your past have, and you think back to that, it almost puts things in perspective that, hey, I've been through something so much more challenging, so much more difficult, you know, I can get through this, but then as well, like for there's many people who might be going through some a new type of challenge for the first time and don't necessarily have that thing to look back on or that difficult moment that they got through. And so in that case, it's about, you know, getting through this difficult moment. So later on, when you, you know, have something come up, you can look back on this and be like, wow, I got through that. That was really difficult. And so it's almost like this train, this continuous train of events where if you're getting through something, you know, that's going to help your future self get through the next thing. And your future self getting through that thing is going to continue this almost domino effect. You know, as you continue getting over these obstacles and making the most out of these situations or getting through these dark periods or difficult times in your life, it'll continue continue this snowball effect and it'll become a little bit easier the next time, a little bit e easier the next time until it's a habit and you've trained your brain to only think about things in the most positive way or realistic way that you can and not, you know, go to that negative place like the way you did before. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that I, that I like to also mention and that I've been thinking about is don't underestimate the impact that you have on others while you while you acknowledge and appreciate uh, the impact that your parents have had uh, with you and in your life and your trainer or myself, you know, and 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 it's I think it's very important to acknowledge that and and tell them, you know, hey, you've had an incredible impact or you're having a fantastic or extraordinary impact in my life, and I want to thank you, but don't underestimate the impact that you're having in their life, and I think that that's something that I can also speak of. Uh, in, and I've, you know, with you, obviously, we, we've had a, a, a very special uh, interaction and multiple interactions and relationship um, and friendship over the years. But, uh, but I've had multiple people that you just don't know who you're impacting. You, don't, you just don't know who are you inspiring, uh, who you're affecting. Uh, you know, it might be someone in the stands that is watching you. Look at Ezra. 
uh, the way he competes, the way he behaves, uh, the way he just fights through uh, or jumps or runs, you know, you could be inspiring and touching and affecting someone's life that they're going through that dark place or that adverse time. And, and just by watching you or meeting you, that interaction could be, you know, a difference maker. So I think we, we have to really understand sometimes and appreciate the value of our actions and the impact that we have on others. And I think that you've, you've had a lot of impact throughout your life and you know, you're still very young. Uh, and I hope that this also gives you a perspective uh, of how much more you can continue to do if that's what you really wanna do. I think it's very important of, of being true to that, um, not making it feel like a weight on your shoulders, but something that if you're passionate about it, you know, and it brings you joy and you see the importance and relevance of it, you know, continue to do it. You because. Know? Maybe you'll make it to the Olympics or the Paralympics this uh, next summer. Maybe you won't. But once you accomplish that, it's going to be, okay, what's, what's next? What do, what do I want to do? You know, what do I want to continue to do? What's important to me? What is going to provide the most significance in my life to me and to my family? So I think uh, you know, there's, so much, there's so much there that we can think about. And you can think about it at such a young age still. Um, with so much done, but with so much more to do, right? It's so let's pause there because Ezra, I've heard you talk about how how your childhood basketball hero has made a a impact. You know, it's like that Jackie Robinson quote: uh, "We are our lives are defined by the impact we have positive impact we've made on other lives." But pal, let's flip that around. How has Ezra <laughs> made a positive impact on your life? How, how have you been become better as a result? Yeah, no, yeah. no, and I've, I've, I've kind of touched on it in, in different times during the conversation, but I just want to say thank you, Ezra, for the impact that you had in my life and uh, through the great times. And but because the NBA is a, it's a grueling schedule, as you know, as, as Ezra has come to a lot of games, um, but and it's hard to get through, you know, and, and to to have meaningful interactions. Uh, you have always been so refreshing and energizing to me. Uh, so to see um, the days that I was super tired and I couldn't go and I couldn't do anything, but just by you being there, I wanted to get extra shots and I wanted to play extra games or uh, we played hoops a year at the backyard of your house. Um, uh, we went to dinner and we just started dribbling on the street and, and playing. Uh, you know, that's what, uh, that's what, don't underestimate the impact you can have on others, no matter who they are. They just have to be willing to listen or to be open and you don't know when they're going to be. So, so that's uh, by being true to yourself uh, and, and showing that genuine care and passion for life as you have always shown, you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, you have, You've gone through the challenge and the adversity of, of having a disability and being different, but you, there's been a point where you have embraced that and you made that your asset, your attribute, you know, what makes you special. Uh, and uh, and that's, 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 that's beautiful, that's inspiring. The, I, Lakers, the, okay. Lakers have, the Lakers have to thank you for their two championships. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, that's funny. <laughs> no, thank you, pal. I mean, I mean the, the 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 impact you've made in my life, you, it's tremendous. And so the fact, the fact that I made any sort of impact in yours and reciprocated the love that you gave me is awesome. So, well, you know, Ezra, you know that Ezra was uh, in the cover of, of one of the books that I published uh, called Vida, uh, and I I wanted to capture him on, on uh, and wanted to be him on that picture on the cover of the book because. Uh, you know, as an athlete, as a competitor, um, you know, sometimes you can get caught on the recognition, uh, the, the fame, the praise, the materialistic stuff, uh, or the competition and the grind itself. But you might be missing out on the, the chance of really having, um, you know, incredible impact on others and, and, and having a soft spot uh, and utilizing that success in that platform to help others, especially children, right? And inspiring children. Um, so, uh, 
So that's that's what that moment in that picture and that book meant. And I wanted to have be, you know, that, that moment that was caught uh, with Ezra, uh, which, um, you know, we were on the ground on this, was it uh, El Segundo, El Segundo was it? Or, Something like that, yeah. At a gym that, uh, that we went and we just played and, um, and, um, and we just laid on the floor and, um, and I think you get, you give me a kiss on the cheek, I think it was, and he just like jumped on me and it was just a, a beautiful moment now, you know? So I, just because you're like very successful, don't underestimate the human interaction, the power of, of connecting with each other. Uh, and, and children, uh, they're, they're so unique, they're, just, they're, they're so genuine, right? And they have so much uh, ahead of them. And you can, uh, you can influence it in a greater way, in a very positive way, also in a negative way if, if, if they're exposed to that. So uh, you, you wanna create that positive energy uh, and that inspiration. And, and Ezra has also provided a lot of inspiration in my life. Uh, and we always had just fun. We just enjoyed the, uh, those, those moments, I think. Fun, that's very important. You know, and you mentioned it, pal, that children, there's an entire future self, right? And we mentioned, we talked about the idea of the future self. So Ezra, you're only 15. Give us a glimpse into your future self. How will you continue? To you know, say it's now you are you've already been at the Paralympic Games, you've won your gold medal. Take us beyond that moment. What's after that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that's it's, it's sort of daunting to think about in a sense because it seems so like like it's it's not obviously I know it's not super far away, but it seems so far away because like the what you know everything is you know so close. I feel like, but that like my what I'm doing after the Paralympics and everything, and. To be honest, the uh, the real, the honest answer is I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure what, what my life is going to look like. I was talking to my family about this actually a few days ago. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that I want to do within the Paralympic movement. And I want to, you know, compete. I want to, you know, win medals for my country. But I really, I really think m my purpose and, and what I meant to do is to change perceptions about people with physical disabilities as a whole to sort of transcend the plane and transcend those sort of, you know, the, the idea that people with physical disabilities are, are physically not as capable as someone who is able-bodied. And the way I really think that I can do that is, you know, I want to compete in the Paralympics, but who go, who, you know, who knows what can happen later down the road if I have a shot to compete at the able-bodied Olympics and do something that very few amputees have ever, you know, done before. The only one to ever do it was Oscar Pistorius. And, and you know, that did not turn out very well at all. So, and, and, but in my case, I really think that I have an opportunity to, to do something and, and to do something athletically in that sense that maybe, you know, after the Paralympics, if I'm, you know, fast enough if I'm to jump high enough or who knows what can happen then maybe I you know try to make the leap to compete for a spot on the Olympic team competing against the able-bodied runners and any person will tell you that that seems absolutely crazy at the end of the day like I don't you know I'm I'm here to to do what I believe and what I think is possible and so I that you know I was talking to my parents about it and I really think that when I break it down what I want to do with my life is I just want to you know I want to be that that you know, you look in the mainstream media, how many people really have, like how many big actors, big, you know, MB, not necessarily NBA, but big celebrities and stars have a physical disability. Like these kids don't have that, you know, that pow, that Kobe, that LeBron James, that Dwayne, the rock Johnson to look up to with the physical disability, because that just doesn't exist. And so, you know, wh whatever I'm going to do, I truly feel that I, my purpose and what I want to do with my life is just push the boundaries of what people thought were capable with the prosthetic leg. And so, you know, if that means going to the, the able-bodied Olympics and, you know, shocking millions and millions of people and, you know, like what Oscar had, Oscar had done in the past, but, or what, or whether that means, you know, you know, doing something within mainstream media, maybe it's getting into acting, maybe it's, you know, starting a, you know, being like, I don't, I have no idea what the exact thing is, but I do know for, that it, I, I need it. I want it to be something physical and something, you know, involving sports because sports has played such a huge role in my life. But I, when I break it down, I just want to, I just want to be a trailblazer within the Paralympic community and, and do things people have never seen before.
that's that's sort of the 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 concrete answer if I had to put one down. <laughs> Ezra, it's not just um, your impact isn't just going to be on people in the Paralympic you know community. It's going to be for every single person out there who didn't believe they could do something, and now they think we might be able to. Maybe we can. Uh, you're a pioneer. You're a pioneer because. <laughs> Uh, like Mae Jemison, I'm going to throw, you throw us a quote, we'll throw you a quote. Mae Jemison, um, the astronaut, um, one of her quotes is, don't be limited by other people's limited imaginations, right? And we're all, we all have limited imaginations, but you're going to help us imagine and see something greater. And, um, and so in, in, in some of the key takeaways here, you know, one is, I think your superpower is this ability to embrace uncertainty and embrace challenges and embrace what's hard. Your resilience is your superpower and you know, your ability to retain joy no matter how hard things may be. And that is the result of um, you starting off as being different. So you embracing your different, what makes you different. Um, another lesson is this idea of you have a choice to talk positively to yourself or negatively to yourself. There's no good that can come from talking negatively to yourself. Um, and the third is uh, what Pal has talked about, which is we can think about this thing of making a big impact, but at the end of the day, that those interactions we have with one another, those meaningful moments, that is too also significant, you know, and, uh, you're so inspiring and we're so glad to have you here. Are you ready for a lightning round of questions? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, who's your favorite basketball player? Pau Gasol. <laughs> Brownies or cupcakes? Cupcakes. Ah, what superpower? If you could have any superpower in the world, what superpower do you wish you have? I'd be able to fly. I'm close enough, but I want to be able to fly even more with, yeah, with high jump. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, what's your favorite book? Oh, that's a good question. I have a lot of favorite books. Um, uh, I, I've just started, I just finished the Kobe Bryant book. So that's, that's the first one on my mind. So I'll say that one. Okay. Uh, what TV show are you watching nowadays? Mm, uh, watching the show Cobra Kai. It's oh, a Netflix show. <laughs> one of my friends is on it. So I, I'm watching it. Sport. Well, I'm from the generation that grew up on Karate Kid 1 and 2 and 3. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. All right. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. Mm -hmm. And favorite historical figure? Oh, uh, my favorite historical figure. Um, Martin Luther King, I feel like, just because he was such a powerful speaker and he made such you know, a huge impact. So I, I feel like that, uh, that's justified. I feel like I, yeah, Martin Luther King for sure. Wonderful. Ezra, Pal, thank you both for an inspiring, this inspiring uh, episode. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know what, I'm, I, times are hard, but it gives me hope to know that there are leaders like you in this world. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, Ezra, man. It's always, always a pleasure seeing you and, uh, you know, keep being you. You know, keep being special, keep being a trailblazer, uh, you know, uh, change the world. You know, I, mean, I, love, I, I love the fact that you want, you know, uh, to, to open people's eyes more and more um, to, I think, from, from the Paralympic or disabled community to have leaders, to have mentors, to have references and to have them more present uh, in every regard. Um, so if anyone or any kid in the future or in the present is born with a disability, they have also examples and mentors and, and uh, people that they can look up to. They uh, say, you know what, Ezra did it. You know, I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna walk in every room with buffing my chest out and not really caring what anyone thinks because I'm special, you know? Because I, I, my parents love me and I'm a great child and I'm gonna do special things in my life. And no one is going to dictate otherwise. So thank you uh, once again for, for sharing your message uh, and continue to be you, continue to be special and, and exceptional as you always have been. Thank you, pal. It was, it was, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for having me. This was 
truly, truly awesome. We went deep. We, we, we really talked about, you know, some really amazing stuff. So I was grateful to be here as always.